Hello, welcome to scripting tutorial number 20. Right, so I think this is going to be the second to last tutorial in the beginner series. There's going to be one more tutorial after this, and then anything else that I maybe forget to put in the beginner's tutorial series, I'm just going to like add it on. But after the next tutorial, I'm going to start to make the advanced series, okay? So um, the advanced series will start off a kind of easy, and then it will like gradually increase to the harder things. So, um... Right, so this tutorial might go on for quite a long time because I'm going to be teaching you about leaderboards, making leaderboards, adding points to the people's leaderboards. So maybe you might make a mini game script and you want to make a leaderboard for it, you want to add points to the person's leaderboard, and you just want to, you know, whenever they touch a brick, you want to add five points or something to them. So that's the sort of thing that I can uh, show you how to do today. So um, I'm just going to stick it all into one tutorial, I'm not going to split it up into parts, therefore this tutorial might last for quite a long time. Uh, I'm not sure how long, but I'm just going to stop the intro and let's get on with it. Right, so first you need to actually give the values inside the leaderboard. So the leaderboard is just, um, you make a leaderboard uh, value inside the player, so you actually need to say inside the player that there's going to be a leaderboard which is like you just put an int value inside the player like remember the one of the first tutorials about variables I was teaching you about these global variables so variables that you can use in any script so um, it's just to get I think I mean I usually use the int value I don't know if you can use any value you want but the int value is the one you use for leaderboards so what you do is you need to make an instance dot new int value you need to call that uh, leader stats and you need to insert it into the player once they join the game so I'm going to teach you how to do that so um, let's give the script a useful name I mean in all of my games I just call it give values I think I call it give values or something like give give points or give stats but we can just call it leaderboard for the sake, for sake of this tutorial leaderboard okay leaderboard so this is going to make the leaderboard inside the player so um Let's get beginning. So we need to make the uh, player added event. Now this is the event um, which is triggered when a player enters the game. So we get the players game dot players dot player added connect function and it gives you a uh, parameter. Let's say it gives you a parameter of player. Now we're going to go to help object browser and uh, go to players if you can find it. Here we go, players. Now go all the way down to the events and you can see how many events there are for the player added, uh, I mean for the player section. So here we can find the event for player added and this is the event that will be called when a player enters the game. Okay, so when a player enters the game, this event will be called. When the player exits the game, this player removing um, event will be called. Okay. So you can do that sort of stuff. Um, we're using the player added event, so just that's what you do. Game dot players dot player added, and then you connect to function, and then also if we go back to object browser, you can see that the player added um, event on the players uh, object or service on the player service uh, gives you a parameter instance player. So it gives you the actual player that enters the game which is useful so now that we can use this variable here object variable here for that this is basically the player that enters the game okay it's not the character but it's the player so let me just give you an example uh, let's go to tools play solo I'm just going to give you an example what player and character is the difference between the two this is for people who like are really new to scripting and haven't heard of it before. I mean, if you're already a scripter, then you shouldn't really be watching this tutorial anyway. So, if you go to game.workspace, you can see player one here. That's the character. The character is the physical um, or character that's in the game that can walk about. This thing here is my character. All the bricks that put together, my hats and everything, that's my character. And it should be a model inside the workspace. You can open it up, you can see my body colors, uh, pants, shirt, or my hats, all the scripts that are inside my character, my humanoid, and uh, all my body parts, so torso, right arm, right leg, head, everything. 
So that's the character. That's all that thing. All the things that make up the character. Now the player. If you go to the player uh, section, it's under the workspace. It's the player service, and um, here is my player. Okay. Here's the object, uh, player object, and the, my player contains things like the tools that I've that I have in my backpack. So my backpack it's, it contains all my starter gear. So the tools that I will spawn with when I re respawn. Um, it contains my GUI, so like at the moment it contains my health GUI, which is just this this oh, GUI. I call it GUI. You can call it GUI if you want, but I call it GUI. So it contains my little GUI here, um, and then you know like what GUIs are just these um, well a 2D um, something to. Let me just give you an example quickly. Du -du 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 -du. Okay. So a GUI is just something like this. Like you can get GUI buttons, text boxes on your screen, and just like things that aren't part of the physical world. So that's what GUIs are. Just a quick example. So um, now you know the difference between player and character. A player things that you store the backpack, player GUI and uh, starter gear, and the character is just all my bricks and things that I can see. So um, that's the difference. Now, when you're making a leaderboard, you put the leaderboard inside the player, not the character. Because if you put it in the character, then it's just going to keep resetting every single time you die. And also, I don't think it will show up if you put it in the character. So, you put it in the player. Therefore, we're just going to get the player from the player added event. And we're going to make a leader stats. So, that to do that, we just... Uh, we need to put it into a variable first, so let's make a variable called stats, and then equals instance dot new. It's not actually that hard. It's just well, you just make the leader leader stats, which is an int value. So remember how I taught you about instances when we made parts. In this one, we're going to make uh, int values. You can make anything with instance dot new. You can make hints, messages, but if you go to insert basic objects, we can see that we want to put an int value in there. We can uh, select any one of these we want, uh, so screen GUI, script, tool, but we are using an int value for leaderboard. So that's how you make leader stats. Now, remember the two ways that you can uh, set the parent of a new instance. Either put a comma and then the place that you want to store the instance, so comma, player, because we're putting it directly into the player, or we go stats.parent equals player. So we can do it either way, just do set the player through this this way, or you can just put a comma next to the instance. Okay, so th those are the two easy ways. Hold on, I'm just going to pause it for a minute. Okay, I'm back. Right, so, um, so those are the two ways of setting the parent of this object variable, which is uh, the instance.new int value. And I'm just going to do it like this, put a comma and then the place where you want to put the leader stats, um, which is in the player. So this is the stats. Now it's, it doesn't become a leader stats until you give it the name of leader stats. So stats.name equals leader stats. Remember this has to be leader stats and it's got to be a lowercase l. Remember to get all your capitals right. Uh, in scripting, all the capitals need to be right, otherwise the script will not work. Okay. So that's how you do that. Now when I join the game, there's going to be a leaderboard, but there's going to be no values in there because I haven't given it any values yet. So let's give it a value then. Um, what value should I put in there? Points or KOs? I'll do points. Uh, points equals instance.new int value uh, uh, stats. Okay, so this is what this means. Points is the object variable that we're going to store this new int value inside. So, um, and uh, we're going to set the, int, the parent of this int value to the leader stats. So, uh, let's give the points a name now. Points dot name equals points. Right. So, now we've got a leaderboard, and uh, it's it's that simple. Just make an event when the player enters the game. Uh, put the leader stats in there, and then all your values that you want in the leaderboard. You just make down here, uh, let's make wins, points and wins, and let's call this wins.
Okay, so now if I go X, exit, and uh, play solo, we can see how it's been structured. I'm going to show you how, how the leaderboard has been struc structured. Actually, no, I forgot, you can't, in if you do play solo, uh, leaderboards don't load up in, in play solo mode, so you've got to go to start server, and then start player after. That's what I forgot to tell you, leaderboards do not load up in solo mode. You've got to go to start server, once you're in the server, just go to tools, start player. Okay, so first tool start server, wait for the server to load, and then you do start player. Because if you do start player before the server loads, then the leaderboard might not load properly because the script hasn't loaded yet. Okay, so now I'm in, I've got my player here, you can see that I've got a leaderboard now. I've got my points and I've got my wins. Okay, so it's, it's that simple, that's how you make a leaderboard. It's just like five lines of code and that's it. So now I'm going to show you how it's structured. If I go to players and in my player, we can see that directly in the player, we've got our leader stats int value here. Okay, now you need that when making the leaderboard. Okay, you just need need to have that leader stats as an int value, and then we expand that, and you can see we've got our points and our wins. So these are the two things that we've inserted it into the stats into the leader stats okay so this has its object variable uh, the name is stats in the script so you can see if I go to the leaderboard uh, stats equals inst instance on new int value inside the player and then the name is leader stats as you can see down here it's in the player and its name is leader stats and then point equals instance uh, in, in new int value and we've inserted it into the stats we can either do this player dot leader stats which will be the same thing because if you go to player then you go to leader stats and it's inside there or you can just do stats and it's the same thing because stats is the object variable of the leader stats here so it still be inserting it into the stats now so yeah that's that's how it works and you can just insert as many values as you want into the leaderboard um, if you want them to be numbers just make them in values if you want them to be strings make them string values obviously not the leader stats, I mean the actual, uh, what are they called, points and, uh, I forgot what they're called now, but the points, wins, uh, KOs, things like that, um, the different values that you want to have inside the leaderboard. If you want to have a string value, say, string value inside the stats, and you want the string, uh, you want it to be wins, so we want the wins to be a string value, uh, let's say wins.value equals yes actually no equals win okay so now we've set the value to win we can change the points value points dot value equals uh, five so when a player joins their points will be five and the wins will be wins or I can change it to lose if I want I mean it could even be a bull, bull value by changing it to bull you can make it true or false so well, if I set that to false uh, our wins is now false. If I go to tools, test, start server, then start player again, you can see how the value changes. So each item in the leaderboard, you can change the value just by going to getting the object variable and then changing the value by doing, say, wins.value. Okay, so you can see points is 5, wins is 0. Hold on. I think because it's a bull value, if you change it to true, yeah, it goes to one. It doesn't show true or false. It doesn't write true or false. If you if it's true, it will go to one. If it's false, it will go to zero. And I think that's how it works. So if it was a string value, you'd be able to see some text here. Okay, so we could write the word win here, uh, and it will show it would show win. So see, so we can do it with uh, string values, bull values, int values, whatever you want, whatever value. Um, I think I'm not sure. I haven't tried it with object value, but you can try that if you want. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, you can give it a go if you want. So have a play around of that. And now what I want to cover is changing points, not using scripts or yes, using scripts. But when you touch a brick, uh, your points change by maybe ten. I want to cover that sort of thing. And then I'm going to be covering automatic point changing, like in the script. Uh, this is what's going to happen. It's going to change your points maybe every second by one, so time that you've been in the game. Okay, so I'm going to show you that afterwards. Uh, let's make this quick. Insert basic objects part. 
So let's insert a spawn as well because I want to spawn next to the part. Okay, I like to make my spawns purple as you probably gathered and anchor it. Let's anchor this as well and uh, make it green. Right. Um, let's insert a script into it and let's call the part uh, points giver. Okay, so now that we've got our um, points, so we've got our points in the leaderboard, that's all set, it's all good, good to go. Let's make a function um, event inside the part uh, when the person touches it. So let's make a touched event. So let's go script.parent.touched connect function hit uh, end. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Here's our event. Now, when we touch it, it's going to call this event. And the, th the brick that touches the part will be set to this object variable here, hit. So first we need to see if the pers if the thing that touches the brick is a actual character. I mean, say, you say you're driving a car and the car touches the part, um, it'll still call that event, but the car is not a character, it's not a player. So therefore, if you try to change the points of a car, then it would crash the script. There'd be an error because the car does not have a leaderboard. It's just a, a car. You want to make sure that whatever touches this part is a player. It's a it's a character, and you want to make sure of that. So let's go ahead and make a check. Now, let's just call it. We're going to have to check for humanoid because we're going to assume that anything that touches the part that has a humanoid is actually a player. Okay. So let's go hit dot actually no let's say humanoid equals hit dot parent now say my right right leg touches the part um, the character model is actually the parent of my right leg so we've actually here we've got the model of my character so this is the, this is my character now hit dot parent is actually my character okay and uh, we know that the humanoid is inside the character so let's try and find the humanoid now uh, we use a inbuilt function called find first child. I will explain all this uh, afterwards as well. Find first child, and then we just type humanoid. Okay, so this is what this is does is it it gives the object variable humanoid here uh, the value of our humanoid. But if there is no humanoid, then this will be equal to nil because there's nothing in there. It'll just be nothing. Okay, so that's what this does. We've just made a check to make sure that whatever touches this part has a humanoid so that we can change the points of the player. Okay, because there's no point trying to change the points of a of a sword that tries to hit this um, brick because a sword is not a player. We need to make sure that it's actually the player touching this brick and not some sort of other object. So now let's compare it. So we make an if statement. So if humanoid is actually uh, another operator that I forgot to tell you is the not equal to so I'm going to teach you that now this little squiggly symbol here okay you see the little squiggly symbol that I've highlighted that is actually equal if you put double equals then you're saying if humanoid equals nil but if you put the little squiggly symbol there then you're saying if humanoid is not equal to nil now we could put not humanoid before that and take this away okay uh, we could do that I think that would work as well uh, I'm not sure I haven't used that in quite a while but I'm just gonna do it like this just for fun so that's that's how to use that that's the not equal to symbol uh, and that's how you try to check if something is not equal to something so if humanoid is not equal to nil which means that there is a humanoid inside the part okay so if we get into this if statement, that means that there is a humanoid inside the model that we're using, which means that it's probably a character. Therefore, we're going to try and get the player from the character. Now, because this event doesn't actually give us the player, we're going to have to get the player ourselves using another inbuilt function. So let's go ahead and get the character, hit.parent. Okay, so hit.parent is now our character because if we have a if if our right leg touches the parent i mean touches the brick then the character is the parent of the right leg therefore this is our character so 
that we know know that's our character. Now let's try and set a player variable. So we're now going to try and get our player. So player equals game dot players get player from character. Now that is pretty much self-explanatory. This function here. Uh, if you go to help object browser, if we go to the players bit here, we can see that all the functions are here, and one of them is get player from character, and it takes one argument, which is the actual character. So that's what we've done. We've um, gone to game players. We've given it this function, and we've given it the argument of our character. So now player is equal to the player of the character. Okay, so that's what happens in a game. When you go into a game, you've got a character and you've got a player. Uh, the character, I've explained it to you and I've also explained what the player does. So we know that the leader stats is inside the player. So let's go ahead and try to access the leader stats. Um, let's access the points, the points um, item. So yeah, the points variable. So point equals player dot leader stats dot points okay so I've shown you how it was all laid out the leader stat is in the player and the point is in the leader stats make sure to get the capital letters right C uh, lowercase l for leader stats capital P for points since here we've set it to a capital P okay so the name is a capital P for points now now that we've got the points inside our object variable we can start to change the value which is so easy points dot value equals points dot value right this just uh, makes no sense here let's add something to it plus five All right so now it makes more sense points dot value equals the value that it is already plus five so if it's already ten we'd say points dot value equals ten plus five so we're just adding five to ten which is fifteen so that's how to do that now this actually has no debounds so um, I'll show you what debounce is after this but because it's got no debounce I'll show you what it does if you go to test start server and uh, let's wait for that to load you can actually press alt f7 I think to start a player alt f7 or if you don't want to do that just go to tools test start player alright so watch our points watch the points whoa whoa what's happening I've touched it once but it goes up by more than five okay I just want it to go up in five but it's gone up in more than five so what's just happened right so I'll show you what's happened um, we've triggered the touched event so many times when touching it because my right leg touches it first then my left leg touches it then I move a bit and then it triggers the event again for the right leg then it triggers it again for the left leg and just keeps triggering it all the time we haven't added a pause to the event okay so let's make a boolean value called debounce and let's set it to tr actually no let's set it to false I don't know what the difference between uh, true and false for deep debounces it doesn't really matter what value you set it to just I'm just gonna set it to false now now let's start to activate the debounce so if it gets touched then we want to make the debounce true so let's go ahead and say debounce equals true here okay so once it tests if the humanoid is not equal to nil so that means the character has a humanoid therefore it is probably a player we're going to set the debounce to true okay now that the debounce is true um, let's go ahead and give the points okay we've given the points now let's wait uh, three seconds and uh, then we're going to set the debounce to false okay what we also need to put here is if humanoid is not equal to nil and debounce is equal to false okay so now that the debounce is false you can actually change this to enabled. I think enabled makes more sense. So if the actual boolean is enabled, so let's change it to enabled. It just makes more sense when I'm explaining it. Okay. So enabled is just something if if it's active. If if the points giver 
is going to be uh, active and you can you can use it that means it is enabled okay but once you touch it we want to wait three seconds before anyone else can use it so and then we're going to change enable to actually no let's change it to true let's change this to false and let, I'll explain it all afterwards enable this true okay so someone touches it humanoid equals we're going to search for the humanoid inside the part okay you can't just do humanoid equals hit dot parent dot humanoid because what if it doesn't have a humanoid it's going to give you an error therefore we need to test we need to say okay has it got a humanoid therefore we're going to use this inbuilt function which is find first child humanoid okay uh, you just put the name of whatever you want to find inside there um, we're going to test okay is there a humanoid if there is this variable here is going to be equal to the humanoid if there isn't a humanoid this is going to be nil that's why we're saying if humanoid is not equal to nil so we're testing to see if there, act if there actually is a humanoid inside the part or inside the model and we're also testing to see if the script is enabled okay if it is enabled then we're going to go ahead and set it to false then we're going to change the points by five then we're going to wait three seconds then we're going to make it enabled again so that other people can use it now enough of me talking let's go ahead and try it out because that's the only way you'll get good at things if you actually test it out and try the script to see if it actually does work so let's go ahead and uh, start a player remember you need to start server first and then start player right so now when I touch it it gives me 10 points then it doesn't give me any more points until three seconds have gone so I'm touching it, I'm touching it, I'm touching it but every three seconds it's going to give me a point as you can see because remember last time when I was constantly touching it and it just kept giving me so many points it just gave me like hundreds of points um, now it gives you the five points that we scripted it to give you okay because you touched it it gives you the five points then it makes you wait three seconds before you can touch it again and then after the three seconds it becomes enabled again therefore we can we can touch it now and get our five points see it's not it's, it gives me points every three seconds so let me close this and uh, just to oh yeah, here's a quick task for you um, try to change the brick color to red when it's no longer enabled and when it becomes enabled try to change the brick color to green okay just to let people know when it's enabled and when it's not enabled okay remember three seconds can be as long as you like you can make them wait 30 seconds before getting another point so um, this is just basic touch event uh, giving points to people this is as well tricky as it will get in the beginners series um, and another thing I want to show you then is is how to constantly give players uh, points like when they enter the game it gives them a point every second okay so we can do that easy now I haven't done this in a long time actually it's been a while since I've been scripting this sort of stuff so we'll just see if I can make it work now let's go ahead and do this let's make a while loop while true do okay so it's just an infinite loop and we need to put a wait one second because we want them to get a point every second and uh, let's because we've put this while true do loop inside the actual event we still have access to this player um, player variable we've got access to all of this so let's go ahead and uh, try to change the points so let's go points dot value equals points dot value plus one Okay, so it should give me a point every second. Uh, let's go ahead and try that out. Start server. I really want to look at my Skype messages now. Uh, let's start a player. We can actually start two players if you want. Let's go to. Let's go ahead and start two players. Okay. Oh, look at that! It works. You can see for every player, it just uh, it, it works. So it's given me, oh no, what's happening? It's given player two, two points every second. Okay, so, hold on. Right, so let's try and fix this. What is going on? Uh, 
home start value. Let's go ahead and say player dot uh, leader stats dot points dot value because I think we need to actually get the points value of the actual player and not just the object variable because that's just going to cause chaos we need to actually get the player itself and then change the points from the player uh, I'm going to try and see if that works so this is why I inserted two, uh, inserted two players to the workspace because I wasn't sure if it was going to work with multiple players this is why it's good to test absolutely everything when making a game you've got to do so many tests when making a game but we'll see if this works now okay yep this looks better now so you can see that it's it's working now um, and that was that was advanced problem solving at its best that's how to problem solve so if something doesn't work you need to say okay why doesn't it work uh, and then go ahead and try and fix it so now it now it works it works it gives a point to the player every second um, let's go ahead and see how I fixed that now because I was changing the um, the points variable here I think because a second event was called it, it started to overlap like the point event it started to overlap the event and then it started to add multiple points to the same variable which is which was in the second player so that's what it did it just started adding two points to the second player which is not what we wanted we wanted uh, each player to get their individual points so that's why I got the player itself got the leader stats from the player and then change the points value like that okay so I, I don't I have no idea how long this tutorial is It's probably like half an hour long I don't know but um, it's gonna take forever for me to upload to YouTube oh well so now that you know how to do that I'm gonna do one more tutorial in the uh, beginners uh, series well I might do more after that if I've if I've forgotten something but for like at a moment I think I'm just gonna do one more and then I'm going to start teaching you the advanced stuff so everything advanced so you can make some really advanced good games so you can now see how easy scripting actually is it just took maybe 20 tutorials to cover the beginner stuff it might take about 30 40 tutorials to cover the advanced stuff maybe uh, five or ten tutorials and GUIs and then we can start to make some advanced games and some cool models things like that so it isn't that hard scripting because I know some tutorials they make it seem really hard but it is not it's just so easy so um, yeah that's that's it for this tutorial then next tutorial will be much easier than this this is just something that's quite complicated that you just need to experiment with so um, this will give you something to do for a while and remember scripting is about just keep playing with um, the script you need to just keep experimenting with it even if it takes you like two hours to figure something out at least you figured it out by yourself and you've you've um, problem solved it yourself and that makes you a better scripter so actually I think I might cover two tutorials one of them actually no one yeah I'll, I'll just do one more okay so we'll see how many more tutorials I add to this series after this okay then so um yeah leave comments if you get stuck and also if you get stuck then uh, go to the Roblox forums find the scripting forum uh, the scripting helpers forum hold on let me just show you go to your f the forums and then it's the scripting helpers scripting helpers okay there's also another one called scripters but you want the scripting helpers one so you just click that and then you can post a new thread if you get stuck like uh, make sure when you're posting a forum make sure you you make the message clear to read so say you got stuck with making a, a touched function say the subject would be help with touched functions and then that would be a title a scripter who knows about touched functions will say oh here we go touch functions so the subject is easy it's not just something like help that's no that's just a stupid title you need to make it clear and then the message you need to include all your code so make it simple where your code is and then you do you paste all your code here and then above that you just give them a quick message on what you're stuck with so I am stuck with making a touched function it uh, isn't responding or something like that 
uh, say some sort of variable isn't changing to the right value that I want I'm stuck with if statements in the touch function uh, say all that sort of stuff and then you need to make sure you you say what you want the code to do and uh, what it does so far so if it changes the variable to the number five say it changes the it changes this variable to the number five and uh, that's all it does when I wanted to change to the number six and then someone will come along and help you and say oh here we go all you got to do is uh, assign the number six to the variable okay so yeah that's just a really simple uh, that's a basic um, explanation of what they'd say to you but so yeah remember if you get stuck like if you're really stuck make sure you spend at least like half an hour figuring things out for yourself don't get too lazy and uh, once you like really stuck and you can't do anything then come to the forums and start to ask or you can post on my YouTube videos and uh, I'll probably try to reply to you and help you with your script okay so you're now becoming a more advanced scripter so I'll see you in the next tutorial then where just like one more tutorial in the beginner series and you will be a pro okay bye